face that this world has forgotten. Mm. What is up, you guys, and welcome to another episode of the Who Was Really Bitter. And this week we are covering the fighting frogs in Polygraph versus Toxic Croak. Now, before going into this video, I do want to explain myself why this matchup came to be. These two Pokemon actually do only share fighting, of course, as their individual typing, that are being water fighting and the other being poison fighting. So they have a few things in common, but they definitely are vastly different between one another, though there are I would say close apart to some extent, but due to their niche typing and functionality, I kind of figured that if I go and cover these Pokemon at some time, it's definitely not going to be Polyvrath versus Kelio. I got that suggested, I'm going to say that's just, there is no matchup there. However, between these two, there are a lot of things to talk about, and overall, these two Pokemon have a lot of strong niches, which only makes this matchup that much greater to talk and embrace about both of these Pokemon, and while I will go over their overall arc and theme matchup ability and mood pool, I will also talk about what makes this Pokemon great individually, even though it could be that some Pokemon here is clearly better than the other, but even with that said, let's talk about which one of these two are really better. So the first one we're going to cover is Polyrath, and first of all, really Polyrath's typing, it really to spec at one of the more unique aspects in Pokemon being a Finding Water Pokemon. There are only two Pokemon like this, the other one being Keldeo. What does a Finding and a Water type bring to the table? Well, defensively, they don't encourage each other to be effectively working together with the all that much. However, there are a plethora of resistances involved with this typing in Bug, Dog, Fire, Ice, Rock, Steel, and Water. And the weaknesses, yeah, as I said before, they aren't complementing each other, which means that the weaknesses from water and finding will stick. So electric and grass from water and fairy finding and psychic from the finding type. However, I would say this type of combination is a superb type combination because there are individual Pokemon here that can be easily walled out with this typing in mind. And consider polarized brawness and bulk, it's actually a very fair typing combination, probably a stronger contender for the bulkier variant between him and Keldeo, due to him having the bulk to pull this off and making the type of combination, in my opinion, defensively better on Polyrath. So when it comes to the stat distribution of Polyrath, one really, really has to emphasize on that bulk as I was talking about earlier, 90 in HP, 95 in defense and 19 special defense. That's very high. It's bulkier than most bulky water types actually. So a very very surprising bulk distribution and the attack set isn't all bad. 95 there on the regular attack and 17 special attack which doesn't sound like a lot but it is usable considering what Polarite can be doing. And of course the speedster is 70, yeah it's slow, it's definitely not a sweeper, however for a bulky border type that's a pretty good speedster, I only think it's rivaled by Melodic actually in that extent. So Polarite overall really really strong balanced stat distribution, however it doesn't peak at anything which means it doesn't necessarily are aimed towards a primary role, however it is very very adjustable and formable making Polarat's stand distribution both unique and kind of its weak point depending how one of you add it. However, Polarat's abilities are really really interesting, while Damp isn't necessarily that, uh, being able to actually neglect uh, moves like self destruction and explosion. We both have Water Absorb and Swift Swim, which definitely work in his favor. Water Absorb, for example, being able to actually soak water hits and get, of course, 25% recovery back to you. That's kind of clutch. That's kind of clutch. Definitely was one of those real strong niches versus a Skull Switch in, which also made Polarat with Assault Vest a really interesting aspect to use. Still, kind of is actually. But the other ability is Swift Swim, and trust me, it's not that bad. 70 base speed, as said before, while kind of average for a possible wall breaker, it is an interesting aspect for a Pokemon to have a stronger speed tier and Swift Swim, because that means you can focus more on attack and consider what this Pokemon has in attack, that might actually not be such a good or bad idea going actually for an adamant set and actually going for that 70 base speed and doing the best out of it, because you still will be able to outspeed anything boring Scarfer of 100 base speed so overall I would say that it's a strong set that I definitely recommend highly however else a Pokemon is only as good as its move pool allows it to be so how good is Polyrap's move pool let's find out so one thing I'm really gonna say before going in here I don't include all the moves but only the relevant one however I have to mention Hypnosis which I found out I didn't include here Hypnosis of course put a Pokemon to sleep with a 55% chance while a low chance it's a very very real chance of that happening. Um, 
That out of the way, Polaroid gets Circle Throw, which is one of its main niches, being able to, like Dragon Tail, force switch Pokemon out. Being able to actually be Rest, Sleep, Talk, Circle Throw, and Bulk Up is a very strong set this Pokemon can be carrying, and Circle Throw is, of course, a main priority in that. Uh, we also have Ice Beam and actually Blizzard, uh, Earthquake, Psychic, which is very niche for a fighting type to be carrying a Psychic move when you aren't a uh, part Psychic typing. Brick Break, Bulk Up, Surf, Waterfall, Focus Blast, Scald, Rock Slide, Poison Jab, Throat Chop this generation. So actually till now it didn't actually get a knockoff or anything like that, which is usually a something you want to carry if you're a fine type to be able to hit super effectively towards uh, other psychic type. However, Throat Chop did resolve that, making Polar Red a lot more interesting now actually. Ice Punch, clearly something you do want. Uh, Billy Drum, yeah, it's, it's a move. Um, as I said there, Switch Whip and Billy Drum is a combination, a very real one at that. So being able to capitalize on Billy Drum would normalize and actually, or I mean normalize MC, um, you will be able to actually cover that really, really well because it means you get recovery and get to set up. And consider that so far we haven't seen any good fighting moves, it's a real opportunity for Polar Rapid to at least spam a waterfall, throw chops and ice punch at least. We also have Hydro Pump, we have a Priority and Vacuum Wave, we have Counter, Seismic Toss, and Body Slam. Reason Seismic Toss is here is because due to Generation 1 being reintroduced, you now can carry the likes of possible um, switching combination with Seismic Toss and being a bolt variant. However, Water Absorb is the one to be preferred with that, together with Toxic and possibly Rest Sleep Talk. Overall though, Polarat overall is a Pokemon that I would say has a lot of really strong moves overall, a niche special move pool that can be capitalized on, which Vacuum Wave, Hydro Pump, it does carve itself to be really, really strong. Bulk Up and Belly Drum are really, really good setup moves towards this Pokemon, and consider that already pre-existing Bulk is a Pokemon that is very, very capable of pulling these aspects off. However, I think the only downfall Polarite really do have is actually lacking proper fighting step, not having Drain Punch, nor superpower or close combat means that Polarad's reliance on um, finest style comes in focus punch, primarily and actually brick break and possibly low sweep. Submission is an aspect but as stated there it's a bit of a risk because of recall and since you are a bulky already you don't want to have recall and actually nullify your possible bulk. But overall I think that's the only downfall of Polarad and while it resides in the lower tier it is very functional as a bulky water type and of course as a possible Swiss swim sweeper. A Raspid, of course, as I said, a bulky water type that it does lack proper recovery outside of rest, which is unfortunate, considering the mixed bulk is just up there as one of the better ones actually in the game. And considering the typing, it could have been very useful had this Pokemon had recovery. That said, though, I really like Polarack myself. It's a great Pokemon overall and great frog as it stands today. So, with that said, how can even Toxic Rogue compare? And yeah, to some aspects it does, and others it actually doesn't. So, let's actually talk about that. So much like Polyrad, Toxicroak do pack one of the more unique typings in the game. Actually, individually, it's a loon, which is really good, which also makes that small box really, really interesting to look at, isn't it? Kind of small there. Way to go, me. Anyway, that said, though, the poison finding combination is actually a fairly strong one, with resistances in it. Bug, Dark, Finding Grass, Poison, and Rocks, which overall I say is very good. While they don't necessarily complement each other either, there are a plus of resistances mainly to actually Poison, which does make this Pokemon very interesting. However, we have weakness in Flying, we have weakness in Ground, and we have a very, very strong weakness in Psychic, which is always scary to have in mind. However, Toxic Rogue doesn't necessarily suffer all that much for it, but it's worth keeping in mind that it's an, it's an aspect that has to be kept, or undoubtedly, in mind. When it comes to its stat distribution, however, it's very clear here that Toxic Crow do not have the same balanced stats as Polarath. However, it does have what I would call clear indications and peaking. Uh, first and foremost, HP definitely lower, but not by a lot of 83, and then the defenses are actually split at 65 both. So yeah, bit on the lower side there. However, we have a vastly raise in its attack at 106 that's kind of high that's uh, that's up there 
Uh, it's definitely it's roughly 11 stronger than Polyrabs, and trust me, that means a lot to consider the Pokemon's type of combination. 86 in the special attack, yes, yeah, so with 15 base stronger in the special side, so definitely more of an offensive Pokemon than it is bulkier. And the speed tier, of course, being a slightly speedier in Polyrabs, the 15 base speed stronger, which could be everything or nothing, but for Toxic Rogue, it does open up a variety for this Pokemon to work very, very fundamentally. However, as stated, it's not as bulky, so it has to keep stuff in mind when it's worked and of course used offensively. So with that said, its abilities kind of provide that. Uh, we have Dry Skin, which makes it immune to water, while of course getting a weakness to actually the fire type. However, Dry Skin will recover much like Water Absorb 25% of your HP, so a bit of a polygraph situation there. Poison Touch, Photo percent Chance with Contact Move to get your po Pokemon Poison, or Poison Pokemon Poison. Which is also, as stated, fairly alright. Consider that usually Pokemon has to soak a hit from this Pokemon, and if they're able to soak it, well, they have a risk of getting poisoned. And that's not always the great thing. The only things being immune to this is for Steel types, and well, Steel types are hit super fatally with Fighting Stab, so it's a double edged sword. This Pokemon definitely can capitalize on Poison Touch really alright. And the other one, and probably the most workable one, depending on how you want to see yourself with this Pokemon, is Anticipation. Being able to see that your opponent has a move that can hit you super effectively is a good thing and definitely a league aspect where Pokemon could be carrying Hidden Power Psyche. Being able to anticipate it and actually get that ability to kick in is always going to be very very grateful to this Pokemon because that means that you have an honest chance of actually switching out and don't take that super effective hit unless you're fast ranking KO that is. So overall I would say that Toxic Rogue is a very very cool Pokemon. While I think Polarat has the better abilities, I definitely think that Toxic Rogue has a variety of abilities that makes it fairly unique and attack sets and special attacks that are to die for what a great combination that is with that speed here while not as bulky it is clearly more offensive than polyrath so the only remaining aspect is to talk about the move pool and my god the toxic rogue definitely have a move pool it's a very very broad one i really like this move pool quite a lot definitely think more pokemon should take this to actually account we have taunt which is always good definitely with that speed here it definitely helps pursuit being able to pursue trap pokemon is always going to be an aspect that's going to be important if you want to capitalize on it you will be able to do so even though you, the Pokemon which are of course weak to pursue trapping in general can hit this Pokemon super effectively but as stated still a good thing to have Sucker Punch yeah it's up there having a priority move always nice and definitely as stated due to Pokemon that could hit this super effectively such as Sunkey Pokemon being able to hit then super effectively with Sucker Punch is always a strong niche to have actually Poison Jab one of your bread and butter stabs with poison in mind. Sludge bombs, same thing there. Nasty plot, a special setup. But while 86 special attack is definitely not as threatening, after on nasty plot, things start to show their true colors. And Toxic Road definitely represents just that. Bulk up, yeah, it gets that too. Earthquake, yeah, it gets Earthquake. One of the few poison types that gets Earthquake. How about that? Uh, Shadow Ball and Dark Pulse, I do believe they cover each other just fine as they are, but as stated, due to Nasty Plot, these moves become relevant together with Focus Blast, of course, which sadly doesn't get worse, which is definitely something I think it would have been needing. Uh, Sword Stance, yes. We have actually three types of setup move here, Sword Stance being usually what is used with this Pokemon, due to being hit as hard physically as you can. 106 attack, yeah, that shows after one Sword Stance, I can kill that much. Stone Edge, fair coverage for the likes of flying types. Rock Slide is also there. Super Fang, in case of a bulky Pokemon is to be faced off, Super Fang is actually a great providence. And it, while it doesn't look like it, it is able to pull a possible defensive role with Black Sludge and actually Super Fang. While I wouldn't recommend it, it is able to use it in a league concept. That is a very strong niche. Uh, Crush Up, yeah, don't use that over the further move we're going to talk about. Bullet Punch, another priority. Always great to have outside of Sucker Punch, Bullet Punch is an aspect. Gunk Shot is the more risky move, a 120 base attack. Yeah, it hits hard. Drain Punch, which is going to be usually your coverage when it comes to fighting stab in mind. Drain Punch is a very good coverage move to have. Well, I would have preferred Close Combat, having Drain Punch is an edge, it's a strong edge if anything. Vacuum Wave, another priority move, but especially based. Fake Out, yet another priority. Knock Off. Nice. Bounce. Yeah, with Fly MC, this could be an aspect to use, and definitely versus other possible 
fighting type. Roll around, bounce, and flying stab in general are really, really strong to have in other league concept. And this point, being able to pull that off just makes this Pokemon all the more interesting. And then we have two elemental punches in Thunder Punch and Ice Punch. And Ice Punch is a great filler move if you want to capitalize on Stone Edge. You usually want to go with a dual stab, Ice Punch, or Stone Edge, and then Sword Stance to be able to capitalize on any matchup. But then again, if you have an array of moves you want to capitalize on, and either way you go with it, it's going to work just fine because, well, Toxic Rogue is quite a complete Pokemon if you ask me. So overall, Toxic Rogue can fill two very strong roles. It can be a special sweeper or a physical sweeper. It also can possibly work as a wall breaker. However, due to its low defenses, I wouldn't say it would be a good premier role to cover. However, the speedster do allow it to actually work concise with actually defensive Pokemon it can set up against them. And with dry skin in mind, you can be able to set up against the likes of water types. And overall, it doesn't have that many weaknesses that it is at risk of actually being headled out. And with the ice punch in mind, most certainly ground types aren't necessarily freely coming into this Pokemon. So overall, I say to bring a broad aspect of erase and is whether or not these erase and aspect makes it better and pol than Polyrath. And yeah, yeah, it does. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep this dialogue really short. Yeah, there is no way that Polarize compares to Toxic Rogue. Toxic Rogue has so much more work in, in its favor that I would be lying if I tried to make some kind of excitement out of this because it just doesn't work like that. To be honest though, I don't think Polyrath is necessarily a bad Pokemon, but when it lacks recovery for a bulky Pokemon and it lacks proper fighting stab, in my honest opinion, to be physically active, there are aspects here that make it inferior to Toxic Rogue. I think Toxic Rogue has responses to its worst issues and has multiple ways of priority, multiple ways of setting up. Polyrad is kind of one-dimensional because it's forced to play a bulky role without having hits that hits hard enough and it's now in that kind of weird area or gray area I should say where it's actually more worthwhile using its special move pool due to the higher stab damage from those moves than it is going physical because of the lacklustering aspect of his physical move pool and I believe that's completely wrong. Uh, not having Drain Punch even though it has clearly fists and not in close combat nor superpower nor nothing like that, it makes the Pokemon not impossible to use but definitely worse off than it definitely should be and I feel like I'm de trying to define what would solve Polyrath's biggest issue but quite frankly had Polyrath had any of these moves these two Pokemon would have been a much much interesting to talk about in a wider area because that wouldn't have meant that Polarite actually have a defending capability of pulling a lot of sets up. At this moment, it's very one-dimensional and Toxic Croak, however, can be both, as stated, a wall breaker, a sweeper, and it's doing those aspects great. While it is in the lower tiers at the smoking tiers, it doesn't mean the Pokemon is bad. It definitely doesn't mean that. I definitely think that's interesting. It just means that it's the things it brings to the table as a poison type aren't interesting, but what it brings as an offensive fighting type is a lot more interesting because it hits very super effectively and nullifying them without barely an issue. And the speed here, yeah, it actually outspeed Mega Altaria. Think about that for a while. It is a Pokemon that is very, very, very good, and I don't believe the tier does it justice. People definitely need to wake up on this Pokemon because if you sleep on Toxicro, you might very well lose. Well, if you sleep on Polyrath, yeah, you'd be fair to do so, I don't, don't hold that against you. <laughs> anyway guys, what do you guys think? What do you think about, about this match overall? And what would you hope that Polyvara gets in the future to resolve its kind of impossible situation right now? So with that said guys, thank you as always for of course watching and joining us in the next episode for one of the coolest matchups that I've just been dying for to actually be doing. So uh, yeah, until then, take care.